Hello everyone, thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Andriy Saldatyanka, I'm from, I'm gopher from Ukraine and today I'm going to invite you to journey about debuggers and debugging. And I, I really appreciate that all you woke up and wake up morning and go to this talk. Software development is hard and it requires actual understanding, logic, acting and all this context. Usually we say, <coughs> my code has no errors, but it does not work. Software development has, has one difficulty, it's like lots of factors and issues and different things. But the problem, there are many different books, official documentations, Google, Stack Overflow, but there is no enough information how to efficiently debug your programs. And uh, I have a question to you. How many time do you think you spend in debuggers or in debugging? Please raise your hand. Okay, two. Nice. Uh, and how, how can I debug my program? Any variants? Okay. I will try to answer for for yourself. Maybe we are prints. Who do who, who does we are prints? Raise your hands. Oh, you you are my audience. Yeah, but I will try to teach you how to. But honestly, debugging we are prints. It's tracing. It's not debugging, or you can call it like debugging we are logs, etc. But it's not about debugging. It's just prints. Okay. Yeah, and usually, like, typical day, you're coding, you're fun, and then you start debugging, <laughs> and you're so tired, and it's still hard. Sometimes I feel I spend most of the time in debugging, in testing, then rather than development itself. Okay, mm, I have one more variant. We are playground. Yeah, Wh who use playground? Yeah, it's it's nice. Like you can run. Sometimes it's useful. You have idea. You can quick run your program in playground and see results. But yeah, honestly, it's not about debugging. Okay. And my last variant, uh, who like uh, duck debugging? You know this principle? Yeah. When you ask uh, something in duck, and yeah, and yeah, but. Honestly, it's not about debugging, it's just fun. And yeah, I'm just kidding and try to uh, force uh, correct like flow for you. Okay, now let's focus on some uh, more advanced stuff. Uh, in Golang world, we have two debuggers right now, uh, is Delph and old school GDB. Uh, and uh, yeah, I expect you at least heard and or use it a lot or not. And how many of you n know about this interesting fact that Go version prior one included debugger with name Agal? Please raise your hand. Nice, it's my audience, I like you guys. And yeah, it's very not well known fact. And it, it's fun because when you run Go uh, space Agal and you can debug your name of your program and it looks like Google because it's go ugle, yeah, fun. It's like Google, yeah, it's what they can do. And and it's not my like dream or <laughs> something like it, it's real. It, as you can see in repository, it was, and this was not ready for time of release one, and they decided to the, the go out and it was removed, and you can find uh, some uh, commits with uh, removing and of this ugle um, tool, and yeah, okay, but uh, return to reality, uh, Go <coughs> compiler support Dwarf, it's like debugging file format used for many debuggers, uh, which is agnostic of tools and it's independent of any language. And that's how you can uh, compile your program in Delph or GDB or any debugger who understands this format can debug your program, which cool. And because by default it's enabled, it's very important to disable it for production. You can do it with minus W. And uh, yeah, th this can reduce the binary size 
and but without no loss of any functionality but it's another it's topic of another talk because how to reduce your size of your binaries <coughs> okay L let's assume you already know delf i hope so i don't want to show you some basic stuff like uh, how to debug hello world that's why i call it advanced and <coughs> What we need right now is understand that you can install Delve, then you have this command, and you can run Delve debug or Delve test, and you can, yeah, Delve will compile it and run it, which is very useful. Okay. And, uh, okay, some more stuff. Uh, why I like Delve? With Delve, you can debug your real application, not just main.go, and if you have pretty standard folder structure for CLI tool and you can run with package name like with pass of package and then you can uh, pass some args uh, to your CLI because usually CLI read from stdin and uh, then evaluate something and yeah with with Delphi you can do it you can break on main and you continue you can next step all this stuff is very simple, I think you know it. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's tricky to debug CLI tools and you, you can do it with Delft. Okay. Another, my, my favorite one is, okay, you write a test and you run it and your test fail, you don't understand why. You can print something, okay. You print and you still don't understand. You can, and you can debug Delft Delph supports the same uh, structure of parameters as Go tooling, which is fun. You just put two dashes and then same uh, command like test run, name of the test, and yeah, it will work. And yeah, you can, you can step in like set breakpoint, then continue, and then check what's, what's wrong with your variables, and then you pause and like in theory it calls like interactive debuggers which you can uh, go uh, deeper and so uh, debug your source code etc etc uh, yeah and then like for instance run your your test I, I mean in this example I just would like to demonstrate you can you can put breakpoint by test name. It's also very useful, like you run Delft test package name, and then you figure out, oh, the name of the test is whatever test condition one. And yeah, Delft will do it, and it will pause on test, and then you can check what's wrong with test, like this. Cool. Yeah, it's still simple and not interesting. <coughs> Uh, more fun uh, when you have loops, like, I don't know, you need to go through a loop of 1000 elements and uh, it's tricky to uh, like click next 1000 times because the debugger will, will loop with you and uh, for this reason we have conditional breakpoints, which also fun. Uh, you can, you can say, uh, yeah, you can you can set uh, create breakpoint, but you need to name it somehow, like B2 for instance, and then you can create conditional breakpoint where condition is number equals three for instance, and if you click continue, you will see that your debugger will step into the condition which interesting for you, which also really fun and interesting and useful. And no need to, and it's easy like to debug parsing of huge files or whatever, where loops is huge and you need specific uh, test case, for instance. Uh, okay. Sometimes you need to set variable. Uh, it means like you debug, you have some uh, local. Uh, storage with lo local variables and uh, you decided okay what what and you need to run your function for instance or check some condition 
in case if variable will be, for instance, 10, not 1, and uh, you need to do it without uh, changing your source code, recompile and run it with Delph, you can just do it with set. You can say set equal, yeah, equals 10, and yeah, then A will be 10. And for deeper function calls or stack, you will see this a will be 10. Okay. I just mentioned call function. It was not uh, ready before Go113, I, th I think. Um, but after two PRs merged to runtime and to Delve, uh, they added this function. Uh, and also in Go Survey, I don't remember, 2016 or something like it, was like item that like debugging is really important for language and for community and uh, yeah we have this PR and it has been merged and now you can run uh, ability to save call your functions and you just can call my func and uh, it's example I just debug main function and then I call t and it goes by, yeah, it's typo in my example because I call dummy, not T, but okay, I think you understand the idea. Uh, then Goland added this, this feature which called expression evaluation. Who used Goland? Raise your hand. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I use Goland, but I still debug in, in console. I will explain why later. Okay, um, let's go deeper. Sometimes you debug and you need to print print your struct, especially struct with uh, points. And to illustrate this, we have nice package. Go, sp not sure what's the pronunciation of it. Uh, I read the article and uh, yeah, it's probably yeah. And the idea is like you have a struct with uh, with um, point to header, and then you create structs and you add point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And because FMT is like common used and standard package for printing, it just print sometimes not very useful information, and it 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 does it for performance. But using this package, uh, you can print more deeply. It's not high performance, but for debugging, it's very useful. Uh, you can like pretty print your um, like your structs, etc. It's very useful with C code, especially with I mean C if you use some C bindings with C Go, etc. You can create your custom stringer, and it will work. And yeah, I highly recommend it. And Unfortunately, I don't have time to show you, but there are way how you can inject it to Delph, and it will be ready uh, in Delph uh, with uh, with this. But I think you can do it without me. Okay. Okay. It was like um, small and and pretty simple. Now we are we are living. Uh, microservices, containers, dockers, Kubernetes, all this stuff. And like usually you not run your debuggers locally. And yeah, I have some tips for you how to do it with Docker. Uh, how many of you use Docker? Nice, okay. Yeah, and probably you, you have something like it. Yeah, you have Docker file, you do it's not production, it's just for demonstration. Uh, you you have some working directory, you run. Uh, yeah, for instance, uh, you can add line with um, install delve, and then you run your application, and you can do a trick, which I really enjoy. You can run your application, like you can run bash inside your Docker environment, and then you can do something inside. And typically, you can run Delve debug, which makes sense. But unfortunately, it does not work this way. 
and it's easy to fix. Who knows how to fix it? Sorry? It's ne next point, yeah. But it will not work with remote debugger too. Any other ideas? Correct. Yeah, in in Linux, uh, we call it app armor, especially in Docker, and its operating system protects uh, application from security threats. And uh, yeah, you need to add capabilities, and also you need CSP trace. And yeah, if you run it with security options, and like like, like I showed, it will work. And uh, yeah. You can create your Docker debug file and put all this or some scripting. And that's how you can you can see Delph inside Docker and you can run if you mount your source code, you can edit it and you can debug it inside Docker. It's really useful because uh, I prefer to develop inside Docker compared to just in plain O6 for instance, because it's same as on production. Okay, uh, as one of you mentioned remote debugging, it's also another point which I really like and I have a demonstration for you. Uh, I will go, uh, probably I will start with demonstration and then show it very quickly. Uh, explain each step. Okay, okay, I will show you the idea. As you can see here, uh, I'm I do the same as in slide, but I add capabilities, etc. And you do, you don't see my entry point, but I will show you a little bit later. I will explain how it works. You run uh, from one console. You run your like uh, application, which uh, bind port eighty eighty, and for Delph you run port uh, 40,000. Uh, also Delph is client server application. It, it includes two parts. Uh, before that I showed just two parts at the same time, but uh, you can run it in stateless mode uh, with an open port and then you can using Delph connect to this port and debug your program, which I really like. And here we run Delph connect and we connect to Delph, and uh, then we can uh, like find. Yeah, I like it. If you type funks, and then you can using some wildcards, you can find all functions which start with main. Yeah, it's main main, and you can set breakpoint to main, and you can continue. And as you can see. Uh, on the top screen, I connect, and as you can see, logs of debugger uh, that we created breakpoint, like it works. And and I that's how I can debug my um, application inside container, which, for instance, deployed in Kubernetes, which I also really like. And uh, yeah, you can jump, and you can do what, what you really need. Um, okay, how it works. Uh, pretty simple. I created this Docker file, and because it's my production, I I need to like I'm using multi-stage Docker file. I copy some parts of my production and of my Delph uh, build env I call it, and I just run Delph with headless true, and uh, I just run my src hello dot go whatever with logs, and that's it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how I run it. I build it and then run it. Uh, you can you can reuse this. And one important point, as I mentioned in console, you saw my uh, like real source code of binary which I run in headless. And for for doing this, you need to. And because I run my Delph locally. As a client, I need to substitute passes of source code because Dell don't know where your source code is places. That's why, uh, honestly, if you know how Golan works, they inside when you debug inside Docker, they do absolutely one-to-one -one steps. They copy paste all sources to local machine 
and it use it. It's not use really source code from Linux, uh, from Docker itself. And if you, yeah, as any tool, Delve has configurations and you can just add this line, like say, okay, uh, from its uh, source, like source of my project inside Docker and my local copy of uh, applications. And that's it. Uh, yeah, you can also you can configure it in Delph itself, like using config list, and yeah, and that's why after when we do this, you see this like um, source code. Otherwise, you will see uh, parts of memory like uh, which looks ugly you will not see where you, where you are. Like you can debug, but you can jump between source codes because it debugger needs like map table of dwarf this uh, metadata to your source code with lines, etc. Okay, I just show you demo. I hope you enjoy it. And since we have a little bit time, I will show you in which cases still GDB makes sense. It's GNU project debugger, allows you to debug it inside your program starting from, I don't know when, maybe I, uh, it's older than me, for instance. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there are some advantages using GDB sometimes. Uh, yeah, but if you, if you start using GDB in 06, like me, you will get stuck on some issues uh, for instance, co code is not signed, and then you can fix it using permissions and create certificate, just skip it. If you get stuck on it, you can always reuse my slides. Uh, you also can open reads uh, because we, we don't, like, I will show you here. Uh, yeah, because we also don't see source code as here. Uh, by the way, if you not configure Delph, you will see similar stuff. Like you can set breakpoint and you will not see any source code. And then you suspend it anyway. And uh, yeah, like to fix this, you, you need to understand one important part. Starting from Go 1.11, Dwarf is comp compressed. I think I mistype it, not compressed, compressed. And uh, you need, for Delve, you need to, which I really don't like, because if you already build your binary, and you need to rebuild it to using GDB, not like Delve, and you need to comp compress dwarf false, and it will work. Uh, you can, yeah, you can, you, you you can build it and, and, and use it. Okay. Also to GDB better understand the runtime of Golang and like uh, all internals, there are some fun stuff. It's Python inside. You you know each binary of Go Go program includes Python file. Yeah, it's fun. Like it's like Guido a little bit edit himself. Yeah. Why we have this runtime? Because, uh, yeah, we need to source it before we run GDB. And after that, we yeah, load Go runtime support. And it's not a joke, yeah, like this file exists. As you can see, I use strings, it's to find all strings in binary name hello. And I just grab by GDB. As you can see, uh, it's already included inside binary itself because strings read binary uh, strings. And uh, yeah. Why we need it to just uh, to see all this, like if you fix all issues which I mentioned and successfully GDB works, you can uh, like jump on lines. It's not so fancy as Delve, but it works. And um, why I show it for you, 
after this fancy delve and nice stuff. Because sometimes, yeah, GDB does not GDB does not understand Go programs well. And uh, but I use it a lot for C Go codes. Like if you need to debug uh, some C Go, um, I mean, like if you have some Go code and then uh, some C code which uh, directly inside Go, you uh, Dell will not understand it. But with GDB, you can step into this code, which really nice. But looks ugly. I agree. <laughs> but yeah. And also, when I also you can, as this mentioned, you can debug some uh, concurrent programs. You can better see memory, especially. You can like it's not about profiling. It's about like show you, for instance, if you have a slice, and uh, you can't imagine how it's in in your memory. And if you use GDB, you will you can inspect the slice and see like how it's placed, uh, and uh, yeah, it will help you to understand what's wrong with your like slice. Sometimes it's useful. Okay, uh, I have some small conclusion for you. Yeah, debugging is fun, N not so like not not. And, and, and always useful for me especially and from my from my experience people who still use prints and don't use debuggers spend more time to investigate issues because with debugger you can find issue like quicker and also with debugger you can understand a real like execution flow not like you expect uh, why I'm using console interactive debuggers, which looks a little bit odd, uh, because it helps me to to force to different environments. For instance, uh, you can connect to your Kubernetes, connect to your Docker, and debug something inside. You can um, like SSH to your server if it's old and check what's wrong. It's like, yeah. Um, and it's really quick. UI clients for debuggers, uh, because Golang, VS Code, etc. It's just client for debugger. It's not debugger itself, and it's slow. And why it's slow? Because if you saw my uh, first slide with Golang, uh, you you see lots of panels with uh, pre-rendering variables, and if you debug uh, like code which work with lots of data. Uh, Golan just out of memory because it will try you not ask it but it will try to render some variable which huge and it really works slow but using CLI it's just quick because you print what you need not what you know it uh, yeah as I mentioned reading is not like the best part of debugging but uh, you can you can check these slides uh, the name internal architecture of Delft. Maybe it helps you to understand. You can check specification, at least introduction part. Um, if you're not going to implement your debugger, it doesn't make any sense to read, but yeah, you can read docs in go.org and you can check Delft documentation, which so so <laughs> as usually. Yeah, Delft help also useful. And source code of Go. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay. I need to add this slide. I work remotely for Toptel, and we like network of freelancers. And you can always reach me out, and like I will invite you, and you can join. We also have GoLang and in other languages. You can write me email or follow me in Twitter, and uh, yeah, thank you for your attending and questions.
um, like honestly say I, I debug cloud applications locally using kind if you heard about it it's just like wrapper around docker for kubernetes which works great for debugging and I'm not big fan to debug production applications that's why yeah that's where you need logs <laughs> yeah go ahead Gortins? Yes. I would say it supports Gortins, but not all features. And at least uh, I showed you some, I demonstrated some features of Delph, but like call function, but there are lots of limitations of it. That's why same for Gortins. Like you can see current running goroutines and etc. But I'm not sure that you can jump between goroutines etc. With debugging, I think you need to switch your program to like one, one goroutine, one thread, and debug it. Like and then. Yes. Yeah, but GDB will use it as threads. Like, it does a little bit, but it not fully support. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Like, sometimes it takes a long time to set up a watch list and everything else you need in a debugger to get the information that you need. Is there a way uh, that you know of in uh, Delph or um, uh, GDB, like, to um, kind of um, save the state of your debugging watch list and reload when you have to debug the program later again? Oh, it's it's a nice question. I mean, more you use Delph, I think I can type as fast <laughs> as, as I can, but there is, you can review configuration list, you can preset some aliases, some variables, I think some conditions, and then you can just use like short shortcuts. But um, I'm not sure that you can save the state. And it's more about, uh, yeah, I don't have time. But another question is like Delph and interactive debugging, it's when you go uh, inside and deeper. But sometimes you need to step back. Yeah, like what, what uh, you found issue and then you need to start from beginning. But the ne like there are error uh, library which called record and replay. It's mm, made by Mozilla. Delph support it. You can you can create like mm, a file which with this error like record and replay, and then you can using Delph you can step back. That maybe helps you more than yeah. Analysis. Okay, go ahead. More questions? Yeah, I have some for best questions. I have for security nerds like. Close your camera and like stickers for everybody if you like it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs>